more you listen, the more you know. This is Good Politics with Dr. Wilson and Adam Whiteman. Welcome back to another episode of Good Politics. Uh, I'm Adam Whiteman here with Dr. Wilson, of course. So listen, uh, today, Adam, we got a really good topic. Um, we're going to talk about using the power of the presidency against your political opponents. You know, everybody understands that elections in America, there's two elections. You have primaries and then the general election. You know, right now we have a, a Democratic primary going on. I want you to imagine for a second that you were president of the United States and you got all these people running against you and you can start to shape up and see who the opponents are. There's this one, there's that one. Who would you want to run against? And we're asking you a strategic question. Who do you, who do you think you'd have the best chance to beat? I'd say maybe it depends on my political style. I'm going to be, you know, brash and hard headed or I, I all right, let's do it this way. Richard Nixon was in a similar situation as all the presidents. He wanted to run against McGovern. And that would be like Trump wanting to run against Bernie. Oh. And the reason why is he thought that McGovern was too far to the left and he could beat him. Now, makes Nick, sense. He's right. less likely to steal his constituents or possibly, you know, all the people in the middle. He's right, less likely to right, steal. exactly. The, the independents would go to Nixon. Nixon had had serious problems winning elections. You know, he had... Um, lost to Kennedy in 1960, and that was the age when television started make, being a factor. They had the Kennedy-Nixon debates, and Nixon didn't look so good on television. Then. You know, he was more used to making debating points. People thought he won the debate on radio, but on television, he looked really bad. He didn't even have the sense to put makeup on, like, and he had, uh, he was sweating. And, and so he lost that election, and it was close, and the age of TV began to really bite him because he didn't do well as a glamour candidate. Mm -hmm. And he ended up then losing the California governor's race. And then in 1968, he barely, barely won, barely beating Humphrey. And so in this uh, election primary coming up for Nixon running for re-election, he was scared of two people. He was scared of Hubert Humphrey and he was scared of Senator Edwin Muskie. Um, Muskie was governor of Maine, who was eventually elected to the Senate in 1959. Hubert Humphrey was the vice president to Johnson. And so these were uh, the major people that he was worried that he might have difficulty winning re-election. Now, let me ask you something. What would you do if you were Nixon and you knew you wanted to run against these people, you wanted to run against McGovern, but not these other people? If you were scared, if you were scared of an opponent, what is it that uh, you would do? Honestly, uh, in today's climate anyways, oppo research. Okay, oppo sure. research, that's actually a good answer. This is uh, what Nixon did. Nixon's going to do two things that people don't really understand. On the one hand, what he's going to do is have a covert surveillance operation where he's going to start bugging his opponents, and start breaking into the Democratic National Headquarters, setting up bug bugging operations, and there are going to be these shady people who are going to be running that operation. What people don't understand is that he also had a second operation that went on. It was a public sabotage campaign, and this was run by a different set of people. And to begin to understand that, let's um, play clip number two. First of all, on the, on the Watergate, how did it all start? Where did it start? It started with an instruction to me from Bob Holloman to see if we couldn't set up a perfectly legitimate campaign intelligence operation over at the re-election committee. Not being in this business, I turned to somebody who had been in this business, Jack Caulfield, and I said, Jack, come up with a plan that, you know, the normal infiltration and, you know, buying information from secretaries and all that sort of thing. But it's kind of hard to understand him. He's talking about trying to get information from secretaries. Is this all linked to the Watergate scandal? Yeah. Now, what's happening is Dean is, goes into the White House and he's having this conversation at the time that the, everything's blowing up. You know, people have been arrested for Watergate. Um, mm. It's leaking in the press. They're worried that the burglars are going to turn on them and start ratting on everyone. And... He, he goes in there to give a narrative for how all this began. And he says, look, this all began as a simple thing. We just wanted to get opposition research. And how were they going to get the opposition research? Were they going to, you know, request um, documents or something, file Freedom of Information Act? No, what they were going to do is start uh, infiltrating the campaigns, which they thought was perfectly fine. Oh, uh, gotcha. Okay, so, uh, so this is just, let's, let's do it this way. This, that's, it starts off as sport. Can we have that concept? Gotcha, gotcha. And, it, and it's going to degenerate into something else. Now, let's um, play clip number three. So they had some plan that obviously had, I gather, different targets they were going to go after. They were going to infiltrate and bug and do all this sort of thing to a lot of these targets. 
because I understand also after the fact that there was a plan to bug Mary O'Brien's suite down in Florida. At one point, Bob even gave instructions to change their capabilities from Muskie to McGovern. And it passed us back through Strong to Magruder and, and apparently to Liddy. And Liddy was starting to make arrangements to go in and bug the uh, uh, McGovern operation. Who's, who's talking here? Who is this? Uh, this is John Dean. And what he's basically telling Nixon is how the thing got out of control. And what he's saying is, look, instead of this um, stupid little information gathering thing, this whole operation got turned over to the wrong people. And these people started bugging um, uh, everyone. These are the same people that do, who did the break into the to Ellsberg's office earlier in the, earlier on. And so now they, they were called the plumbers, people like Gordon Liddy. They began to bug their rivals. They would set up surveillance operations that didn't involve using um, people. Right, they're using electronic devices. You notice also that they started to bug McGovern. That would have been at the time after the primaries were over. In other words, you had the Democratic primaries happening, and then the main election was starting, so they started to gear up their operations toward him. That's when they got caught. You know, people don't, a lot of people think that Watergate was just about this break-in. That's just when they got caught, even though in the Watergate they'd been in there several times. So, so this, is, wow. this is just wow. when they got caught. Notice, it, though, however, the capacity that they had against Muskie was actually a little bit old school. Play clip number four. They had never bugged Muskie. No, if they hadn't, so they had to stay at, uh, they had infiltrated it by a, a, they had a secretary and a chauffeur. Nothing illegal about that. Did you hear that? There's nothing illegal about that. They, they didn't they, bug him. There was nothing illegal about having a secretary and a chauffeur. In other words, they were paying those people to give them information. And so in, mm -hmm. in Dean's, in Dean's uh, idea here that that was okay, that was sport. You, know, you just you didn't okay. have the you didn't have the electronic surveillance. You didn't break in. You weren't wiretapping. He was just getting information from people. Somebody around was him. paying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 